Hello there. Welcome to Transformation 365. You're at the right place, and it's starting now. Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Uh, say I won't. Why y'all scared to be different? Huh? Yo, what's good, everybody? Thank you again for checking out today's video. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to the page and hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified about every new video that I upload. Let's get started. Now, I'm going to try my best not to make this a ranting video. Um, I, I, I say it because this subject is something that when you listen to it in, in a lot of churches, it just makes me just, mm, mm. Now, um, if you've been in church for any length of time, I'm sure you've probably heard uh, from the pulpit, from uh, uh, somebody across from you in the pew, uh, somebody that you might fellowship with in the church, whatever. For many are called, but few are chosen. I, I tried to say that with the most deepest, churchiest voice that I could, because every time I hear it, that's the way it comes off. You know, it, they just say it like that. It, it just makes it seem like, you know, just, just uh, ah! I'm back. I'm back. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Now, the reason I say this is because many people misinterpret a popular scripture passage that can be found in Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus says this statement. And, and when I read it, I read it after like hearing this a few times in the church. And when I read it, I was just like, man, that ain't what they say. <laughs> now, um, when you hear it, a lot of people, they'll say it in, in, in a way where they're talking about just an elite group of people. That's what it sounds like an elite group of people, a special set apart group of people within the church. I'm not talking about outside of the church. I'm talking about within the church, um, a, a particular group of people that um, are set apart or different than everybody else. You know, for many are called, but few are chosen. However, in this passage of scripture, you see Jesus talking about a person that's holding a feast for a son, a wedding. And in that feast, he goes out to the town and he tries to invite this king, tries to invite everybody to the wedding. But people are giving various excuses as to why they can't come. So the king tells his servant, servants to go out and, you know, invite other people. You know, forget those people that we're inviting, invite somebody else. So they go out and they invite people and they come back to the king and they tell him like, hey, we've invited people. But, you know, it's still not full yet. Then the king turns around and tells them, hey, go out into the highways and hedges and compel men that they can come so that this place will be filled for this feast. They go out and they do it. Now they've done it and the king is walking through the feast. Everybody's eating. Everybody's enjoying themselves. And then he comes across this one young man that, you know, he everybody else is dressed for a wedding and for a feast. But this dude is just pretty much doing what he want to do and dressed how he want to dress. So the king goes over to him, say, hey, bro, didn't you know this was a wedding? And the dude that he talked to was just pretty much stuck. Probably got a, a piece of chicken in his mouth like, that's my stuck face. And from there, the king cast him out, throws him out, binds his, hand, binds him, uh, his hands and feet. The Bible says that he's cast out into outer darkness. And from there, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Now, let me tell you what this ain't saying. This ain't saying that it's a special group of folks within the body. Now, now, when I first heard it, that's the way it came across. I remember I was at a church and this prophet was going around talking to folks, called a couple of people up, you know, told people that they had really great calls on their life. You're going to the nations. I know y'all heard that before. You're going to the nations. Glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. For many I called but few are chosen. Praise the Lord. And so I'm looking at it and I'm just looking like, oh my goodness, because I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm just like, oh, praise the Lord. They're going to the nations. They chose it. Yes. I didn't know. I didn't know. Forgive me for my ignorance. I did not know. <laughs> Once I read this, I'm like, man, that ain't what they say. <laughs> Second thing this ain't talking about is that God's anointing is reserved for a special group of people. I'm sorry I'm still laughing because I, I, I just remember 
the way I was when I saw that. And it was hilarious to me now. <laughs> but that, that it, it, it's not saying that God's anointing is reserved for a special group of people within the body. You know, that's not what this is saying. Third, this is not talking about the elect group of people that's called the ministry. When you read the Bible, you realize that everybody in the body is called to the ministry of reconciliation in some form, shape, or fashion. So we're all called to the ministry. Again, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but when I when I found out it, I, I, I began to just question a lot of ministries out here that are perpetuating this thought. Like, dude, stop that. Ma'am, don't do that. Now, what this does talk about is just simply hearing the call of God, answering it and submitting to it on God's terms. I'm going to say that again for the folks in the back. This is talking about hearing God's call. I'm not talking about call to ministry. I'm talking about call to salvation, coming to the Lord. Submitting yourself to Christ, submitting yourself to the kingdom on God's terms. The reason why I say on God's terms is because we see in that feast example, and if you haven't read it already, go check out Matthew chapter 20, uh, 22. I think it's like the, fir the first 14 or 15 verses in that, in that chapter, and it talks about this. But we see that guy that came to the feast, right? He was there. But he wasn't there in, in proper robe, in proper gown, in, in proper uh, wardrobe. And what happened was he got kicked out. Now, many believe that just because they call themselves a believer, that, you know, everything is A-OK. -okay. But our call is not to submit to our own imagination, but to God's will on his terms. Now, all of this requires a couple of things. Number one, it requires an understanding of God's intentions with mankind. You can't submit to God's will for your life and, and all that stuff until you really understand what God's purpose is for man. And I'm not talking about man as far as male. I'm talking about mankind, male and female, men and women. Number two, it requires an understanding of salvation in God's grace. We talked a little bit about God's grace on last session, but it requires an understanding of, the, of that, that process. Number three, it requires an understanding of the kingdom of God and really seeing it as God's priority. When Jesus explained this particular parable, he said this was how the kingdom of God is. And in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. God's priority in what God wants us to seek first. The bare bones truth of it all is, is that we're chosen by God when we choose to answer the call of God on God's terms, on God's behalf. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't be me over there, you know, cheering on, you know, all that stuff. If I can save anybody that, just, I was, I was, I was over there. I was real deep, man. I was real deep. I was, I was deep in the most shallow end of the pool. I tell you, but thank the Lord for grace. <laughs> Amen. So like I said, man, for many are called, but few are chosen. All of us that accept the call on God's terms, we're the chosen. So I, I pray that this has encouraged you to study more. God bless you guys. Yo, what's good? I'd like to thank you all for checking out this week's video. Um, if you'd like to know more about what we do, please feel free to follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook. I've left links for both in the description below. Also, if you want to be updated on every new thing and the meetings that we have in the city, please be sure to like us on Facebook because we're posting what we're doing. We're posting the meetings that we have. We're posting the different activities that we got coming up. So please feel free to follow us. If you're in the Chicagoland area, come out, hang with us, fellowship with us, and learn more about the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. God bless you guys.